And here we have um, all the premium selection of uh, tequila and mezcal. Then all around here you have um, is um, mezcal base. Uh, and then here what, what we need basically to work with. So we have some whiskey, some uh, bourbons, jeans, and then under here we have uh, all the um, Campari, all the stuff that we, we need to do cocktails. Hey guys, this is Sid Patel, your host of the Inside the Drinks business. We are at this amazing bar, Vihante 87, you know, uh, and that means the traveler. So I love the name. Yeah. And thanks for having us, Bruno, here. Thanks you know, we're going to talk about uh, really uh, the concept of experimental bartending, you know, uh, what goes on, and we're going to see the lab. You know, uh, we're going to go beyond tequila and mezcal and just uh, try to see what's going on with Mexico region as well. So this is a great, great, uh, I think I would say that you got the timing right like people yeah. are in cocktails experimenting leveling up and mess agave based spirits yeah, exactly. perfectly done so let's let's dive deep into it you know just walk us over your uh, journey bruno you know what have you been doing how did you end yeah. up here so um so basically um i, I, I live in spain my whole life so mm -hmm. um, in spain uh, at the moment like five years ago it wasn't like a big market of uh, on the bar i would say mm -hmm. especially in my region um, so yeah, I, I moved just to, to London to, to learn English and I ended up being here for, for five years. Nice. And um, basically I started working in German gymnasium uh, as a barback. Okay. Um, my English was quite bad at the moment. So I was just polishing glasses, learning cocktails and stuff. I love the, I love the bar, I love hospitality. So I ended up, I ended up in this place. Nice. So then my journey went from uh, German gymnasium. I escalated until um, uh, senior bartender. Wow. Uh, then I moved to, to Cahoots. So um, what does that look like? Uh, barback? bar tender and then senior bartender yeah basically what i did my journey was like i started as a barback mm -hmm. uh then i was like kind of a senior barback i was like more or less uh -huh, so okay. there is senior yeah. barback as yeah, well. the, <laughs> back in the days there was like a, a lot of uh, preparation to go behind the bar um then uh, i moved to junior but uh, junior bartender uh-huh uh, then i was just bartender and then uh, wow so senior. it's not so it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was it was a journey it was a nice journey. good to know i mean yeah. uh I think patience, right? Yeah. Is, is, this it is, is, I'm sure you're experiencing yeah. is, it's, it's tough uh, in yeah, yeah. young bartender. Bruno, I want to ask you one basic questions for the consumers out there, right? A uh, lot of uh, this tequila movement and mezcal, we're all buying, you know, even like a lot of my friends, in, and I'll be very honest, even me sometimes don't know how to best consume, you know, how to consume yeah. tequila and mezcal. Yeah. We're still at that level one, you know, at home. Yeah, no, I mean, what, what are your tips on, you know, what should a normal people at home do? Um, so me, I would suggest to try as much as possible. I think like uh, you should educate your palate first. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, tequila mezcal is, is well known on the industry, but maybe for people like more that they are used to drink beers or drink wine, maybe it's something kind of new for them. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest just try everything, train your palate. But how do you like, are you drinking with water oh, or um, coke or you know, what's the best uh, way to consume? Personally, the mezcal, I would drink it on, on his own. Okay. Like just um, I will put it on a, on a shot. Basically, what we have it here is okay. um, this one is called copitas, All so right. it's made with um, it's made by hand, um, and you just put it in. It's not to do a shot. It's just like to sip it to to go through all the all the elements of the of the mezcal to try to appreciate. I love them. this. You know why? It's because nice. earth and mezcal, yeah. like this, that's how they are baked as well, right? Yeah, so yeah exactly. You can at least feel the yeah. earthiness, and yeah, yeah, it, if it's that. in a sort of, it's I'm assuming it's mud or. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, it's a mud that we nice. uh, they did it by hand. So neat, basically, have, not yeah. even ice. You no, 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 no. Okay. Me, me personally, I would, I would suggest. What kind of this. temperature? Do you put mezcal in fridge when you're storing? No. Oh, okay. No. We keep it there. You okay. drink it on room room temperature and right. just sip it. And uh, how about tequila? The tequila is a bit more. It's a bit more freestyling, I would say. Like you mm -hmm. can drink it on the rocks. You can drink it with uh, with some soda water. It's a bit more like. Um, a whiskey, I would say. Okay. It's, it's a bit different in a sense. So depending so, on, someone yeah. can drink with soda, someone can drink with water, yeah. someone can drink meat. Yeah, you can drink it as a shot, you can drink it um, on a cocktail or something like more. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more, it gives you more 
chances what, what has your fun. observation been like when people come here when they're having tequila how are they drinking how are they preferring um usually most of the people uh, the blanco they shot it they, they do they ask for a shot still, still yeah, in the shot still, huh? still in the shot <laughs> we it. tried we tried to educate them <laughs> and to push them to don't do it but i mean at the end it is what it is got it so after 12 it's tequila time. yeah yeah uh, and then most of the people actually they, they drink it with soda or okay. with some uh, uh, lemonade or something like this. Let's go on, you know, defining the concept of experimental bar or a cocktail bar, you know, uh, yeah. which experiments. What are you calling this? You know, what's the concept? So I think now everyone is like trying to say this uh, experimental cocktail bar. Mm -hmm. uh, but in my point of view, experimental cocktail bar is like when you try to go out of the normal. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, most of the people and most of the bar, they, they just mix bottles. They, mm -hmm. they mix like certain bottles and they do classic cocktails. That, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there is like, lately it's been like a lot of uh, machinery getting mm -hmm. involved. There is a lot of uh, new techniques, especially mm -hmm. coming from the kitchen and mm -hmm. stuff. So we're trying to use as much of new techniques uh, as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's how we we'll call a experimental cocktail bar. We have a, a nice lab at the back. So. Got it. So it's, you know, I think, I mean, to what I know is there are main four types of cocktails, right? We all yeah. put it in that category, long fashion, all this and that, yeah. classics. So this is, this will be a cocktail where it can fit nowhere or anywhere, is it? Yeah, in a sense, like uh, usually, in my point of view, when, when you go to an experimental cocktail bar, you, you try to, it's most with the, um, regular things like uh, you can say a strawberry but mm -hmm. then strawberry in a way that you will never imagine I would understood say. that's that's Got what it. i would say so it's uh, yeah it's more of a culinary uh, yeah. sort of yeah, experiences yeah. Uh, mixology experiences yeah. and understood i think so it's, it's a lot of uh, mixo sorry mi mi it's like more mixology related and even raw material as you said uh, yeah. it's a very different way you're sourcing you're doing you're yeah. presenting you're cutting or you yeah know, exactly. i'm sure we'll see that uh when you were when you were like were you part of the design of this or concept uh no uh, unfortunately no okay. uh, basically they contact me on, on linkedin uh, i was working in in cahoots before okay. it was a very nice bar uh, but this opportunity you cannot let it go it. Uh, so yeah we have uh, as i said like we have a very 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 nice uh, lab oh. laboratory at the back um and then the the way that we do the cocktails here we are like zero waste uh, it's a zero wastage uh, cocktail bar which is uh, very trendy now as well. And Sit I think and wastage. Zero, zero wastage. Zero wastage. Zero wastage. Got it. Yep. So, um, uh, and, then, <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, basically it's tequila mezcal uh, as a base. All so right. I think it's a, it's a very trendy, Got trendy it. bar. All right, guys. So we are just at the behind the bar and we're going to walk you know, over and see some amazing spirits and why they are there, why they're placed there. You know, we're going to talk about the business of uh, behind the bar. So Bruno, you know, walk me over. Uh, a bar station like how yeah. have you set up you know what's your theory behind so, it so yeah at the moment uh, we're closed but basically this one here is the first station so this one is the dispense you have uh, the ticket machine here so usually the guy here is more focused on, on bringing the service to all the tables mm -hmm. um, in here usually we have like a waiter mm -hmm. um, so he's gonna take the drinks and then these two other stations are more used um, in sense of um, of uh, giving experience to the to the guests um, so then at the back we have um, all the, this side is all for tequilas. Then in here we have um, all the premium selection of uh, tequila mezcal. Then all around here you have um, is um, mezcal base. Uh, and then here what, what we need basically to work with. So we have some whiskey, some uh, bourbons, jeans, and then under here we have uh, all the um, Campari, all the stuff that we, we need to do cocktails. Uh, then we have uh, freezers. So all the freezers are for we, we put all the um, all the glasses on the glass weather so it's a chill, as chill as possible uh, then we have just fridges and this one right here is um, like a cooler it's not technically a freezer because it doesn't um, it won't freeze more the ice but we'll keep it at the right temperature so the ice won't crack when we put the when we put the liquid in um, we do a preparation of the of the ice block we have uh, chunks uh, so we have square chunks and then we have uh, long chunks uh, for different cocktails. And then here, usually what we do is like uh, we have different salts uh, that we do with the zero wastage uh, mentality. So in some cocktails, we, um, we use uh, different citruses, different fruits, different uh, vegetables. So we turn it into a salt to don't throw anything away and we, we can uh, prepare it in here. Then we have uh, all the glassware there. We have uh, different glassware for different cocktails, water glasses, uh, some sniffers for, for try. Uh, wine glasses, everything, everything that we will need. And then in here we have uh, this is the station. So at the moment it's closed, but we 
put in the spirit rail, we put all the bottles that we need, and then in here we do all the prep that we can need. We don't use crushed ice in here, we just have uh, regular ice, and, and that's just our extension. So let me uh, take a step back and, and go in that conversation where you got you know, your, whoever, your boss, I mean, pretty much hired you, right? Yeah. And at that time you said it's brand new bar. Yeah. So what, what was the conversation? Like, what was the expectations out of you? What did you have to do while it was built up? Yeah, building so up? me personally, I have uh, the ambition to go to the 50 best bars. So that's the nice the premises of this place. Like, that's So you're going to take this best. and you yeah. want to make sure it's one exactly. of the top I bars. I mean, I think like being part of a, of a new project and being able to, to bring this bar to the best 50s uh -huh. instead of just arriving to a best, best 50 bars. Uh -huh. I think like it's a different feeling. Like if you get hired from a place that's already in the 50 best, mm. I mean, don't get me wrong, is it, I, it would be Correct. amazing. Correct. But if you bring this place from brand new to a super recognized You've seen bar, that side. Yeah, you exactly. know, yeah, yeah. You know, everything has to be perfect, yeah. what it takes. So that's what you want to do with this bar. Yeah. I mean, when, when I had my first interview here, yeah. uh, basically the bar wasn't built yet. Uh -huh. uh, it was like all, all under construction. What were like four or five, like, or maybe two or three good questions that you remember, which were like, oh, all right. Yeah, um, they asked me if I was familiar with fermentation. Uh -huh. uh, now it seems like sort of easy for me, uh -huh. but on the on the timing was like a, a bit of a, of a weird feeling because okay. I, I never experimented with uh, uh, fermentation before. Um, then they asked me a lot of uh, tequila, mezcal knowledge. Uh, so yeah, I, I was, Kind of familiar, but not that much. And at uh, that time, did you know that this was a tequila mezcal? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I knew, I knew. I prepared myself, but there is a lot of information of tequila mezcal that I learned with the time working here. Got it. Uh, and then uh, what surprised me the most was like um, that we were going to have a lot of apple. We we're going to have uh, this sort of machinery, like mm. high-end machinery, nice. that I never saw before, and I, I was really, really wanting to. I'm sure to you're doing with. a lot of learning already. Yeah, 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 trying to learn the machines, how to use. Yeah. Now I, I think again, this is one of the myth out there uh, where mezcal is considered premium because just some new yeah. word came in, right? Yeah, exactly. Tequila is. Uh, like old now, yeah. So obviously it's like value-driven sort of thing. Yeah. And yeah. mezcal is like oh, some premium yeah, it's stuff. Like, it's like the uh, new. It's true or false? Um, it's false. I mean, at the end, uh, if you go to Mexico, they both are from same, the same. Exactly, exactly. how they're made, and yeah. it's just like uh, how it arrives to the to the market. So true. basically, um, the tequila market, unfortunately, is based on the on America. Yeah. Uh, on the U.S. is more is closer for them, and yeah. there is more consumption there. Uh, but slowly, slowly, with places like this, we're pushing it more in Europe. Nice. So, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say like one is better than the other. Just enjoy Same, it. Both. Yeah. Let me go on that uh, zero waste. You know, uh, what kind of waste do you generate anyway on a normal bar versus zero, right? So just walk me over what is waste, like yeah. percentage, in, in terms of business as well. Like, you know, it's two percent of your money being wasted. How is it? You know what is going on there. so we try to reuse as much as we can all the elements so mm -hmm. for example in the when we use the rotary um so the rotary is like this machine that spins creates like a vacuum and then you you can um, uh, redistill in your own in your own way so mm -hmm. we for example um we for the lana and tulum for example is one of our cocktails we use so distill meaning like additional flavors that you want to add to a spirit that's what you distill there yeah, yeah, all is still there. So basically what we do is we smash the strawberries, we, we put it, we mix it with some tequila. Okay. And then basically what it does is red steal the, the liquid. So you get that clear liquid in one side, but then all the strawberry paste stay in, uh, in one of the flasks. Got it. So what we do is we, we dry it okay. um, and then we turn it into a lollipop. So we put it inside of the cocktail. Mm. Then for the cocktail, for example, we like to ferment uh, a lot of vegetables. So what we do with the, we take the juice of the vegetables out. And then with all the vegetables, instead of throwing away, that will be like the common answer in most of the bars, we dry it and we turn it into a salt. So okay. we put it on the cocktail as well. So very basic question, you use lemons and all that stuff, yeah. right? Like if you squeeze it. Yeah. Do you do anything with the squeezed lemons as well? Yes. So basically um, for all the, usually what we do is like for all the lemons, we try to peel them first. Mm -hmm. we, we use a lot of uh, peels for, for, garni uh, for, um, for garnishes and for uh, to do preparation for, for the cocktails. Wow. And then uh, instead of throwing away maybe the white parts or like the whole lemon or something, we, we do seasonal cocktails. So with the, with the discarded fruits, Very we ferment it or we do, we do different things. And then uh, we turn it into salt again. We, we, we try to use like a lot of salt. Yeah. 
Um, then also, for example, we have an uh, alcohol free cocktail with the remaining uh, of the lemon. Mm. So we, we, we take the lime, sorry, the lime peels, we, mm. take, them, we take them away for, for garnishes. And then with the whole remaining lime, we cut it in pieces and we do uh, an alcohol free cocktail with it. Is it still a thing? Like people remember it after January? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still asking? Still, still remember, All right. Yeah. Nice. So it's, it's a category now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say so. Okay. Yeah, now like uh, zero wastage. Um, like try of sustainability, sustainability yeah. and the alcohol free cocktails are, are, are cool, you know. cool. And the elements of a, uh, you know, experimental bar, you know, uh, what kind of menus you have, you know, I'm sure just talk me over like, what are the basic things that you must include if you're doing this kind of concept? Yeah. So um, in here, the, co the, the menu is based on the four elements of the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're trying to bring these four elements in, inside of a cocktail. So for example, mm -hmm. if uh, you say fire, so we have the fire element. Uh, so you have some cocktails that, for example, we say fire as a mezcal because it's like um, it's been under the oven and then you cook it under, yep. under the um, the fire pit. The fire pit. So so yeah, we we try to bring like all those elements. So for example, the air we have uh, we recarbonate stuff um, and all these sort of uh, these sort of things. So uh -huh. we try to to put in categories these these drinks uh, sure. with the elements of the, right. of the nature. So this is um, this is our menu. Uh, obviously, you have the, the name of the bar. And then in here, you have the, the four elements of the earth. And then basically, you have all the cocktails with explanation, small draw of what is inside. And then obviously, you see like these elements going in all over the, all over the, the menu. And each, each one of them is different. And then we obviously explain um, how, is, how is it done. We explain on the table. We, we do all of the explanation to, to the customers. We try to educate them as much as possible. And uh, all of the cocktails, basically, they have uh, different techniques behind. Um, later on, I, I will be happy to explain. And then very at the end, you have uh, all the selection of the wine, the spirits, uh, alcohol-free cocktails. So it's like a more of a regular menu. And then in here, obviously, you have all the cocktails at the beginning. So this one here is uh, one of the machines that does most of the hour prep. So this one is a Rotovapo, uh, probably you're all familiar with. Um, so basically, this machine, what it does is like a uh, it creates a vacuum. You put the, the liquid here. You put um, whatever you want to do the mix. So for example, in here we do um, a vodka with uh, sesame or we do uh, tequila with uh, strawberry. And then we also do a horseradish uh, mezcal. So you mix all the ingredients here. It does, the, it does uh, a vacuum. And then um, basically what it does, it does a, conden a condensation here and you have that clear liquid here. Uh, so that's basically what the machine does. Um, Basically, what it does is like it reduce the the boiling point. So like this, you don't burn what uh, is inside, and then you get, uh, for example, the alcohol it will evaporate around 40 degrees. So you you heat the water in 40 degrees, it just go straight here as a vapor form. This vapor is gonna take all the all the flavor from uh, the strawberry or the sesame or the horseradish, and then it will condensate back down with this cooler system here, and then you will get all the all the, the liquid here with all the flavor. And then in here is where you have, a, like you can have a strawberry paste or a sesame paste or a horseradish paste. And then we will just take it out, clean it, take a, take a little out, and then uh, we dry it uh, on the dry machine. I don't know exactly what this is now. Um, and we do salts, we do garnishes, we do kind of everything to don't waste anything away. Show me some of the uh, one or two of your favorite spirits, you know, just uh, if you can, uh, explain me why what do you look for when you're tasting a tequila yeah. when you're buying a tequila yeah. or a mezcal you know what are the things that you look for so i would say like listen to the people most like uh use recommendation from other people okay uh, like this you discover a lot of uh, of new things you know so if you if you have from other people saying like oh this brand is amazing yeah. you should just try it uh if you see it somewhere else you just try it and, and have a sip and me personally for example i discovered fortaleza yep. which is one of my uh, favorite tequilas. which one is that is this one from here this one yeah so we have uh, blanco we have uh, repo and we have añejo mm -hmm. uh, obviously the añejo for me is my favorite it's a very very nice brand and um, for me it's, I, I would say it's one of the best tequilas oh yeah moment. yeah nice and the price is not too crazy so it's good so then in here we have um, all the fermentation going on we don't have uh, much going on now but we have a uh, lacto fermented koji here then we have uh, lacto fermented grapefruits and lacto tomato water we use it for different cocktails so basically it stays fermented there for like up to two weeks uh, then we strain it away and then, for example, for the lacto tomato, 
uh, instead of throwing away all the tomatoes that you can see here, we do a sort of a crisp and we put it on the top of the, of the, of the cocktail. So you can eat it, it's kind of savory, savory taste, it's very nice. Uh, and then we finish it the prep with all the other ones, but we have a lot of, uh, of fermentation going on. And then in here we have um, a tepache, we do our own tepache. So it's like a, a pineapple and a grapefruit tepache and we use it for, for the uh, cocktails. So that's more or less everything that we have on the, on the behind the lab. <laughs>